Hello, I'm Tushar. Hi, I'm Rohan. And this is a tag team review of that, the Škoda Kodiak 4x4. Tag. Yes, sir. We've been driving this around Trivandrum all day and you know what, this car actually feels quite good to drive. But before we get to how it feels like to drive, let's talk about some specs first. A 2 litre diesel engine, 150 horsepower, now that's typical Škoda fare. But what you get is a 7 speed dual clutch gearbox and that's a first for a diesel in a Škoda. Other specs include 4x4 as permanent and 18 inch wheels. Skoda's tagline is simply clever and they're not messing about with the Kodiak. Let me show you what we mean. Automatic door protectors. So you don't scratch your paint when you get a new car. Home. Oh. Umbrella in the front door for you. Or your Sahab. Over 2000 litres of cargo room, plus you get these free pillows and blanket. A curtsy light that acts like a torch to find whatever you might have dropped after your adventures back here. A power tailgate. Button pe sitare lapete huye. Up to your face. I was just born this way. So let's let's talk about the motor and the transmission. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Skoda had some things to say about the gearbox. Seven speed dual clutch gearbox. So that's new for a Skoda diesel in India because we've typically been doing the six speed DQ350, the DQ500. So yeah, if you're looking at tuning this car, there is tunability uh, option now. It's a nice fast shifting gearbox. It's it's a lot smoother. I think some of the clunkiness of the 6-speed has uh, disappeared with the 7-speed. I'm not always happy with uh, the performance of dual clutches, but this one is like, I think their top shelf dual clutch, the DQ500. Yes. And it's really fast when I want to take a, overtake a bus, for example, yes. and I need it to kick down so I have that go to go there. It just somehow knows that this is what I want to do and uh, it does it. So I like the gearbox, I really did. Of course, the engine is also pretty nice. Uh, I think they've done a good job. Uh, with insulating the sound. Yeah, it's just great on the go. 150 PS doesn't sound like much, but for a vehicle of this size and weight, it seems to work. There was no problem. It was, it's a really comfortable tourer. So what I like about the 7-speed especially is, you know, your typically low-speed uh, dual clutches, they have mm -hmm. this clunkiness. So the moment you're shifting from first to second, there's this response. Yeah. That? So you kind of feel it at the base of your neck. Mm. That's not there here, which is, or it's very, very well controlled. So the, the feeling is that they've done a good job with, you know, it's, it's evolution of the dual clutch. When you're looking at the higher end performance, when you're doing a lot of expressway cruising, I think that lack of 20 or 30 horsepower might, might trouble some. But if you're looking at primarily 80 or 90% usage in city, I think 150 horsepower is fine. I mean, you're the Endeavour with 150 horsepower engine, you have the Land Rover Discovery, which comes with 150 horsepower engine. Now, uh, overall from a ride and handling perspective, I think this car is quite, uh, for its size again, uh, feels very, very well put together and uh, tight, goes around corners very well. Steering is light. I think we were driving in pretty tight spots yesterday and we found the steering seems to kind of nicely load and unload. Again, typical electric steering. Really nothing, uh, nothing really to complain about in this car. You know, you know the ride is uh, fairly supple uh, across most surfaces. You had some point, interesting point about VAG ride, right? Interesting point about the VAG ride. The VAG ride? Oh shit! Sure. Yeah, so uh, I, I own full disclosure. I own a Volkswagen uh, Group car myself. I own a Polo, and I've always had, you know, a, a, a little bit of a complaint about uh, the ride quality because. It's almost like it's able to absorb, but it doesn't actually unload the uh, suspension 
uh, very easily so or very well so what happens is basically you'll go into a bump but you'll you'll feel the bump because the suspension is actually bouncing out too fast and and that seems to be the case with all their vehicles you know as you go more expensive it becomes less prevalent but it's here it's even here in this uh, vehicle it goes through everything it's absolutely comfortable but you have that last bit where you can hear that sort of thud which 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 is not so much fun in sport mode uh, this is not understand that this is a, a luxury vehicle you typically want the saab at the back to be uh, comfortable of course you're going to have people driving it themselves but you're not going to have full haramkhor mode happening uh, in sport mode mm. even in sport mode there's a great deal of comfort mm. uh, it's it's pretty smooth it's pretty uh, i mean it firms up a little bit but that's about it uh, no news is good news i guess in terms of suspension there was nothing for you to complain about and i think for the most part uh, it's the same uh, with me i think the most important indicator uh, of the suspension yesterday was that i was driving towards the evening sun had gone down and i was talking and both you and karthik actually fell asleep i'm not sure if i should attribute that to the quality of the suspension uh, or to how boring i am um both for me today i would say on an suv up to 50 lakh rupees the general benchmark is the jeep compass this comes very close to that in terms of the right quality i i don't think uh, it's it's a clear winner in in that sense you know it's, i think that the compass still has uh, certain characteristics that makes its ride you know just just right let's talk about the space and comfort now mm. this is an almost full size suv i actually thought this was almost the size of an audi q7 there are <coughs> there are there are elements of this that actually look a little bit like the audi q7 but it is a shorter vehicle it's about 4.7 meters i think yes but they've done good work uh, on the inside yeah three people sitting here is not very difficult yeah. um i think what what's important is that yeah you do have a bit of a hump now because it's it's a four wheel drive so there is the uh, the drive line running all the way to the rear a feature that they've kind of missed out on is uh, ac vents for the third row there are yeah. a lot of cars uh, which are priced lower there are seven seaters that come with ac vents even for the third row and i think this is a missed by skoda i would put this as a 5 plus 2 this is not a pure seven seater you will not find the space at the rear good enough for adults it's good for kids maybe up to the age of 10 or 11 and then after that it's it's going to be pretty cramped out there i think the boot is pretty large as we've realized yesterday you have a lot of permutations and combinations and i think we've seen this even with the yeti i think most customers will like the fact that the 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 functionality of the seating is is pretty good and i think that's going to be one of the reasons why this car will do the kind of numbers it's tested to do agreed on the seats i think uh, they've done a good job with the seats i'm i'm actually quite uh, uh, intrigued by the kind of pattern they've got uh, on the seats it's very uh, it's very squared off it's almost like a klingon battleship sort of uh, thing and and you can see that right there in the frame it, it's got these headrests uh, at the back uh, on, on either side of the yeah. uh, on either side of the seat which which basically hold your head in place uh, when you nod off and um, It's actually very practical and very interesting feature and a first I think for Skoda but uh, overall I think the uh, the seats at least for my size and uh, you know I'm I'm a fairly tiny guy uh, seats are generous nice bolstering uh, nice leather feel a little bit slippery but not so bad if yeah. you look at us uh, if you look at the frame behind us there's one two uh, three seating positions now all these can actually fold down individually so you've got that one you've got that one and you've got that one so i guess it's like a 40 20 40 and if you have all three of them folded down it they go nearly flat not entirely flat and that frees up over 2000 liters of uh, cargo room uh, which is which is plenty i mean you can have a picnic in there no problem at all and of course you've got your rare ac vent so that that also makes it uh, practical they also for some reason skoda has uh, decided to supply a little pillows and uh, blankets uh, behind us right here on on this seat and yeah. on Rohan's seat yeah. there are little cases hanging from the headrest which actually have uh, blankets yeah. and um, so you know that that whole family vibe of this vehicle we're told that in Europe a lot of families buy this vehicle and it's actually got a long waiting period because of it's such about a 9 months to a year in some markets yeah. but it also means that you do not get the kind of variant options that you would have otherwise expected with this car Yeah. So what you get uh, in this case, and and the reason why we have all these conveniences you saw before in the video is that it this is a top shelf model. You've got a four wheel drive, 150 horsepower. Thank you. Panoramic sunroof. Hopefully you won't get wet. 
let let's close the karwa chauth level uh, sunroof so talking about the uh, the equipment level this is of course one variant and at this price bracket they've decided to not sort of uh, uh, do any jiggery pokery and just give people what they expect which is everything so you have uh, karwa chauth level uh, panoramic sunroof up there you've got uh, the touch screen uh, navigation system you don't have an mfd with all the uh, active tft like a lot of other folks wagon group and all these uh, have you've got the dsg uh, which is the 7 speed it's the top shelf model so generally you know it comes together as a nice package particularly with the seating and the practicality and all the little bits and bobs i think this is going to be an interesting package certainly for people who might be looking at the skoda superb for example hmm might consider you know what maybe i want something that's a little bit higher off the ground so i had first seen this car in berlin last year and now that it's finally here i can definitely tell you it's been quite a revelation it's been a a very very good package i just wish they'd offered a few more variants if if you like a car's fully loaded and you know you have the money to spend 40 odd lakh rupees this may be a this may be a car worth considering if you don't you still want to save those few lakh rupees maybe waiting for a few maybe half a year or maybe a more and you know for more kodiak variants to turn up i think maybe then it makes no sense buying this car right so i wasn't uh, at the unveil in berlin hashtag yes. #bitter but uh, i sort of agree with you it's almost a patriotic duty for our government to make suvs cheaper because you know what uh, in bombay where in every monsoon we are basically wading through waist deep water yes. if you don't yes. want to wade through waist deep water and you don't want your expensive sedan being completely flooded with sewage water hmm. this could be an option if you are a buyer in the luxury sedan space in roughly this price bracket then this is certainly an option you get an suv it's a genuine suv you have 4x4 all wheel drive you have driving modes you can do a bit of off roading the ride quality is great the space is flexible there's lots of conveniences but just beyond 35 lakh rupees ex showroom which will be in the 40 plus uh, lakh rupee range in india and this is assembled in india this is not imported so you're not going to be paying those extra taxes it may well be an interesting option for people looking at luxury sedans and we will know more about uh, the final price and specifications and when it's available about on october 4th yes. uh, when we will be at the launch we will uh, try and do a live reveal uh, mm. to our friends on facebook and uh, We'll see you there. Uh, this has been a tag team review. Let us know what you think about uh, this review format, and we should whether we should be doing more of these um, uh, down in the comments, up in the comments. I don't know. And I don't, follow, where are the comments? subscribe, follow, uh, subscribe, etc., etc. Yeah. Follow, follow me, right? Yeah, I'm uh, not worth following. Rohan, thank you very much. Hey, pleasure. That wasn't a tag. That was a proper. That handshake. that was a handshake. Handshake. Kadak. So, Tushar, what's your opinion about the engine and the motor? Um so I think I agree with you about uh sorry what I'm saying engine and the motor So Tushar hmm. what's your engine about the powertrain What's my engine about the powertrain What's your <laughs> Super number 23 So Tushar yeah what's your opinion about the powertrain <laughs> So Tushar hmm. what's it like driving this at 275 without a... <laughs>